For joining us to discuss this is a mal mal malariologist, uh, Professor Wellington Oivo, and he joins us via Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us today on the program. Thank you, Tenola. Good afternoon to you. I'm happy to be with you in the program. <laughs> okay, it's Jocker this time, but... <laughs> okay, Jocker. <okay. laughs> Happy yeah. to see you. Okay, so you know, malaria yeah. is such a big issue. It plagues not just Nigeria, but the entire world. This time last year, the new malaria vaccine was being tested in Malawi, and now more than a million children in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi have received one or more doses of the vaccine. Are we closer to finally eradicating this disease? 2030 is the target, I believe. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, I think we should say whether we are closer uh, with um, some, I wouldn't say optimism. We are we optimistic, but we are not at the stage of eradication yet. Um, of course, there are phases in the uh, continuum uh, as we uh, deal with malaria. So at this time in the country, we are at the control phase. And at the control phase, it means that malaria still remains an important disease of public health importance. And uh, when we leave this stage, uh, we're working towards elimination. We are we'll begin to have zero transmission. And that's a critical one for us as a country. And we are not there yet. Eradication, of course, we're talking about the global eradication of malaria as a disease. And again, that takes quite a lot of work, um, Johnny, uh, going forward. Right, so you, you just spoke about, you know, global eradication now. It seems that it could be, when we look at things, it, it could be easier to say that it, may, it can be eradicated globally. But, you know, there are things that we still need to do here in Nigeria that's, you know, before we move towards eradicating it, um, I'm talking about environmental challenges and getting the people to own, own this to know that they are, you know, partially also responsible for uh, ensuring that malaria is eradicated. How do we go about this? Well, thank you very much, and I'm happy that you've used the right words. We have to own it, okay? Whatever you do not own, you cannot control. And of course, that means everyone is important. Uh, it means to uh, the structures of governance, uh, organizations, everyone must own it. As a country, uh, in terms of government, we must own the direction and drive it where we want to go uh, in Nigeria. And of course, as individuals, members of households, we need to own it. And the way forward is to really implement the, the measures that are known to work. I mean, sleeping under an insecticide-treated net uh, is going to reduce uh, malaria transmission and, of course, clinical malaria. Using the appropriate medicines uh, when we have a confirmatory test done, that's, that fever or other symptoms are, are, due, are, are caused by malaria is the right step to do. If we did otherwise, we're not going to be there. Now, if we do not do the environmental management and uh, we think we can allow it slide, it's not going to work. So at different level, we have to own it, not just say it. We have to take the actions across sports uh, amongst the children, school children, amongst the adults. And of course, uh, that's the way it will go uh, to have that effect. Right. So usually, as in the case of, you know, a, a virus like COVID-19, where, you know, there was a race to get the vaccine out, which, you know, many believe was the easiest way because what else can we do? Uh, malaria too, it's been a long time coming to bring in this vaccine and you know, other vaccines are on the horizon, including one called Matrix M, developed by Oxford University. How optimistic are you on the efficacy of these? Okay, um, thank you, that's a good question. You know, um, the work around malaria vaccines, um, those with some other traditional vaccines we have known, is a long work. And of course, you look at the parasites and then the vectors that are all close to humans. And then uh, the current vaccine that we're talking about, the RTSS vaccine, the Muscaris, has taken 30 years and, um, uh, before we have the authorization from the WHO. 
And even with the authorization, uh, I wouldn't say it is where we're supposed to be, but it means that, you know, uh, what's available currently you can take. So, of course, optimism will, will mean the demonstration of efficacy of the vaccines. And not until that one is done, uh, we cannot see where we are with uh, the matrix M developed by the Oxford vaccine. So the clinical trials are going on, uh, but I can tell you the dynamics around efficacy of vaccines in the past 30 years for different candidates, uh, sometimes they come with optimism and then it drops. But again, of course, we have to be optimistic and hope that it works. Now, but when you have a vaccine for diseases like malaria, it's still not all about, you know, put an end to the disease. Because it comes with lots of caveats, like the caveats we have right now, the RTSs. In fact, the caveat bundles us to now beginning to see how we do the need for. I'm getting everyone to be involved because for RTSs to be effective as demonstrated in those, in those uh, countries, it was bundled along with other measures. So the use of uh, long-lasting insecticide treated nets, effective case management, and of course, other environmental management, okay, use of uh, uh, indoor residual spraying and all of those, helps to at least ensure that we have four children, at least who would have died safe. So and for that vaccine that we're talking about to so play that role, then we have to be ready to ensure that all other control measures are available, they are accessible, they are used. And by the way, you know, if you're talking about Kenya, and then you talk about Malawi, and then you talk about Ghana, these are all small countries. They are like states in Nigeria. And it meant that if, when we begin to implement, we're not going to implement, you know, uh, nationwide. You want to learn some lessons. Start from, you know, certain states where you think you should reduce the burden. And then you want to have your lessons learned, and then you have a gradual scale up. But uh, we have to do what we should do: use other control measures. Yeah, and there's no gain thing about that. That has to be available for right. us to have the endpoints that we're looking at. Right. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you for your contributions there. Uh, Professor Wellington Oyinbo, a malariologist. Thank you for your contributions on World Malaria Day and what we need to do here in Nigeria. Thank you very much. I'm happy to interface with you on World Malaria.